You would have heard about high-res audio. Today, we'll talk about a format that helped make it real. Hi, I'm Tuki. And I'm Tim, and welcome to Learn TV. Today we're going to be looking at how the DSD audio format works. So Direct Stream Digital originally uh, came out of the SACD format. Yeah. Now you'd be forgiven for not having heard of, uh, of, D of either DSD or Super Audio CD uh, in the past because it's, it remains a fairly niche uh, sort of technology. But essentially, about 10 years ago, Sony and Philips, the original pioneers of, uh, of CD in fact, um, decided to get together and because uh, you know things have improved a little bit in terms of the capacity of discs uh, at the time, they decided to introduce a new high resolution audio format, which was yep. SACD. Uh, and as part of that, they developed a new way of uh, of reproducing the sound as well. So yep. conventional CDs use a format called PCM, pulse code modulation. Um, but uh, as I said, you know Super Audio CDs and uh, some digital downloads use this DSD thing. So I think. First, we kind of need to understand, because you're probably thinking, right, um, I've got MP3s and people say to me, oh, MP3s are no good, yep. uh, I should listen to the original CD. So you're probably thinking, well, CD sounds pretty good, right? Why do we need another <laughs> format? Very good question, Tim. So the, the whole thing with, you know, just coming back to, to that CDs, um, you know, at the time, as you were saying, uh, there was quite a limit to, to how many songs we could have on the CDs and also like to have it portable for people to take it home and to listen to that music. So the, you know, the actual songs were recorded at a higher quality, but they were put onto CDs for, so you know, down sample. Down sample. Yeah. So when we're going to talk about DSD, it's going to be that next step up for high quality. But first, uh, just talking about, you know, uh, CD and PCM, what you just mentioned before, it mm -hmm. all works with you know bit rate and sample rate. We did mention that on a previous episode of uh, of Learn TV, but just as a quick recap of you know what what it's all about. Uh, if you have like a sound wave, which is this gray section here, um, analog, you know, nice and smooth. When you put it into a digital format, you basically have you know something called bit rate, which is the number of steps that you have that you can have, and you know for 16 bit, it's around. Uh, 65 and a half thousand different steps okay. uh, come and the other thing that you have is a sample rate which is 44.1 uh, which is you know 44.1 thousand steps that way that you actually have like actually sample cuts through the actual wave so what it means is uh, it gives you like coordinates pretty much to actually try to remap that that wave and actually listen to that actual wave. Right, right, okay. So I guess the obvious question then is, I mean, I, I sort of understand the resolution, the bit rate, yep, 65,000 steps. Yep. steps, that seems pretty good to me. Why have we chosen 44.1 kilohertz, 44,000 samples per second? What's the <laughs> significance of that? No, good, good question. So I think uh, just, um, you know, just to explain why you need 44.1, um, humans can actually hear between uh, 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, you know, 20,000 hertz, okay? So this is like the, the the frequency range that humans can hear. So this okay. is like your sort of low bass sounds yep. and these are high pitched, well, very high pitched high sounds. High, very, very high frequencies. So if we were to, uh, if I was to draw here, uh, let's just pretend that, you know, I'm drawing uh, the 20,000 hertz, which okay. is like this, okay? so. It's supposed to be way way smaller, obviously. Yep. But if we had a, a sampling rate of 20 kilohertz, okay, what it means is I will have a point up here, and then a point up here, and then a point up here. So, as if I was basically reproducing this um, with a CD, it, it will actually give me a line like that, right. which is not a, a true representation Certainly of that. Not a representation <laughs> of, of of absolutely of that. So. Having the, the, the 44.1 kilohertz, you know, it, it's actually based on the Nyquist theorem. And what it means is, you know, you, you need to have double, at least double the highest frequency that you want right. uh, in order to reproduce it. So, uh, you know, here it's, it's, it's roughly double. So if we were using 44.1, we'll have a, a point here, we'll have a point down there, a point up here, a point down there, because, you know, you have double, uh, mm -hmm. tw twice more. Uh, points and what it means is your wave will actually look like this kind of thing okay which is a, a bit more accurate 
still looks pretty angular. It, it does, it does. So it does look quite like a bit like a square wave uh, in, in this instance. But it's um, PCM is actually, you know, for CDs, it's using something called quantization. And what it means is, is it actually rounds up and it, 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 have a, it has a look at where the coordinates are and then basically gives you an average to give you a, a smoother audio uh, file um, to basically reproduce the sound. Right, okay. So, I mean, this all sounds pretty complicated though. If yep. you're dealing with... At 44,000 times a second, you've got a sample that is between 1 and 65,500 yep. um, that, you know, that is going to reproduce a coordinate as part of that wave, and then you've got to, the, you've got to fill in the gaps as well. Exactly. Um, so there's quite process. a lot of processing involved of in that, yeah, which is quite important All right. and, and difficult. But the, the big thing is DSD is a bit different. DSD is indeed a bit different. So DSD was about addressing a couple of key things. Um, the first thing to understand about DSD is that it's a much higher sampling frequency. So Turkey was saying that we can hear from 20 hertz it's up to 20,000 hertz. Yep. The, the reality is that while we can physically hear that, we can sense sounds outside of those boundaries. Yep. Um, and anybody who's been to a live concert and they've got the subs going um, will know that you can feel the bass. It just reverberates in your chest. Yep. Um, what uh, scientists have worked out is that you can actually feel those very high frequency sounds as well, even though, again, you can't really hear them. But the, the harmonics and, and the sounds that exist above those 20,000 hertz uh, frequency rates um, are, are part of our experience, which is why when you go to a live concert and you, you experience it, it's really engaging, you're, you're sort of part of it. You take that recording of a live concert, no matter how good the recording is, put it at home oh, on your yeah. CD player and it's it's never that's quite the same, right? So, that's right. so that a big part of that is, you know, those limits in terms of those frequencies. There's another thing as well though. If I show you the way that uh, PCM audio works, we were talking before about how uh, PCM audio has coordinates. Yeah, yeah, these coordinates, right? So you've got that 16 bit thing. Uh, yeah, going 16 on. bit yep. number so of steps this right, way. And yep. then if we go along, sample rate this way. So this would sort of recreate a wave that was a bit like that. Um, SACD is different, or DSD, sorry, as a format, is different because instead of having those 16 bits, it actually only uses two bits. Two bits, okay. So it only uses either a one or a zero in order to reproduce. Um, the, the wave. So you've either got a 1 or a 0 and it's occurring at, as I said, a much higher frequency rate. So, so the number of samples are much higher. Is that yeah, right? in okay. fact it's about 64 times higher with the standard <laughs> version of DSD. So 2.8 million samples a second versus 44,000 samples a second. So what that means is that when you're building a wave in DSD you start at the start of the wave and then you either get a 1 or a 0. If you get a 1, you go up. So we'll just continue with some ones here, all right? If you get a zero, you go down, all right? So we can go down a couple. Yep. All right, another couple of ones. All right, and, and then you can see, you can start to sort of reproduce a wave um, with a lot more accuracy than you could by uh, using these, these sort of coordinate points. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of advantages to doing that. The first thing is, that it's, uh, you know, you've got this high frequency, you've got the high sampling rate, more realistic sound. The second thing is it's very close to what you get out of a speaker. Um, we've talked about speakers a little bit. When we did a, a, a show on magnetic fluid speakers, we talked a little bit about how speakers work. So speakers work by essentially just getting electrical current that tells them to either be on or off. Oh, um, so so go, ver yeah, very similar to this. So exactly. ones and zeros on and off, speakers on and off. I see. And, nice. and it literally is very similar to this. And to the point where you can get a DSD uh, audio stream, you can run it through a low pass filter and you can get sound out of it. Okay, so it is, it is literally just the way a speaker works. Um, so it's about the closest representative of representation of analog sound that you can get out of a digital format. Um, so it's, you know, it's very much loved by people who love uh, analog sound. I guess, you know, that's the, the sort of technical explanation. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, as, as we just mentioned before, you, you talk about, you know, that quality, that feel at the concert, and you talk about uh, the technicalities here of ones and zeros. but. For, for you guys, it's quite important for you to know, as, as we said before, that 
you know, all your artists have been recorded at a, at a really high quality in the studio. So you don't need to have your favorite artist going back to the studio to actually re-record re re everything. The, the good thing with high-res audio and, and DSD is a lot of those files are actually already available. And you, you can actually go on some website and download those files already. Right. Um, so, you know, it is the, the file format is actually available. And the biggest thing is what Tim mentioned before is having, you know, having a wider range of frequency uh, frequencies and f having that feeling about you know being at the concert it doesn't sound just electronic from a sound system it gives you this bass and those high frequencies that mm. gives you this immersive experience which is what's great about high res audio yeah there's a, there's a lot of research around it and you know one of the key things they've noted is that as you increase the sampling rate you get the ability to reproduce a sound stage much more accurately. Yeah. So instead of sitting there in front of, you know, speaker left and speaker right, you actually sit in front of this, you know, this complete sort of engulfing um, sound. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's really powerful stuff and highly encouraged, uh, highly encourage you that you go out and, uh, and, you know, have the opportunity to have a listen to it. Sony's got a really wide range of DSD capable uh, equipment that's going to be launching um, over the next little while um, as part of our high-res audio initiative. Um, so there's going to be, hopefully, plenty of opportunities to hear it and uh, well worth doing. Great. Right. Thanks no for watching. Catch you guys later.